Hello, my beautiful watchers. I'm afraid that I must beg your forgiveness for this impromptu interlude between Twilight-related videos. I know I made some pretty grand statements about marathoning them, but I've come to realize that taking on a project like that while also moving house was biting off a bit more than I could chew. Unfortunately, said realization took the form of a minor breakdown due to exhaustion. I'm okay now, but after that it seemed like it might be wise to switch to a more agreeable subject for a video or two before setting my shoulder to that particular wheel again. So, the Sandman. First of all, I do want to make the ethics of this review clear. Audible is sponsoring this video, but they didn't pick the subject of review or tell me what to say about it. These are my genuine feelings towards this product. They just happen to be so positive, this seemed like a good episode for them to sponsor. While this is primarily a review of the Audible audio drama, I will be talking about the comic at least a little regarding what may or may not have been lost in adaptation. I'm also going to try to keep the spoiler light because I wouldn't want to deprive you of experiencing this story for yourself if you decide to. Okay, let's do this. Neil Gaiman is a British author known for such best-selling novels as Stardust and American Gods. He's featured on my show before when I reviewed the adaptation of Coraline, one of his younger orientated horror novels. I personally became aware of him through his friendship with my all-time favourite author Sir Terry Pratchett and the book they co-wrote. Gaiman's writing talents evidently extended to other media because in 1989 he created the first issue of The Sandman, a fantasy horror comic book series that would run continuously for 40 years and counting and be hailed as the greatest greatest epic in the history of comic books by the Los Angeles Times Magazine. On July 15, 2020, Audible released an audio drama adaptation of the first three volumes of The Sandman, featuring a full celebrity cast, sound effects, and score, and my beautiful watches. It is just... Mm. <clears throat> Please allow me to give you a little background on the world to start with. The Sandman is a DC comic, meaning it's set in the world of Superman, Batman, and the rest of the Justice League, all of whom are name-dropped at one point or another. Not being a superhero comic fan myself, I probably didn't recognize a lot of cameos that came and went in this, but the four that even I couldn't miss were Arkham Asylum, the Scarecrow, Martian Manhunter, and John Constantine, who plays a large role in one of the early chapters, and to my delight is actually Scouse for once, looking at you, Keanu Reeves. Neil Gaiman's contribution to this world involves the Endless immortal personifications of some of the most powerful aspects of all living things in the universe. Destiny, death, destruction, desire, despair, delirium, formerly known as delight, and the focus of the comic, dream. Dream, as you can probably deduce, is the ruler of the realm of sleep and all that goes on there. He's also sometimes referred to as Morpheus, the one from the Greek legend, not the Matrix. Hello again, Keanu Reeves. The Endless have been around since literally the dawn of time, and while they do hold massive power, they are not as overt godlike as other ancient beings in the DC universe. In an interesting move, the first chapter involves Dream, but is not about him. It's about the mystic cult that manages to corporealize him and hold him prisoner for 70 years. Dealing with the consequences of his long absence is often the main theme of these subsequent chapters. One thing I should definitely mention before going any further, because it might heavily affect people's decision to listen to this, is the Sandman is 100% a horror story, and not in the kind of dark but mostly cute Coraline way in the very adult, very gory way. And I mean really gory, like the squelching sound of flesh being rendered and the screaming and chewing noises of eyeballs being torn from sockets and eaten like a snack kind of gory. There's also several instances of sexual assault described and on one occasion acted out. I struggled to get through this in places. I have to admit, if it hadn't been so awesome in general, I might have bowed out fairly early. To be fair, I would describe myself as being on the the fainter end of the faint of heart scale, but I still think it's important that you be aware of what you're getting into before you download this. Even if you've already read the comic, you might still find this a bit much. I think that audio entertainment can be intense in a way that comics just can't, because you can't look away from or skim over the really disturbing bits, and it leaves more to the imagination whether you want it to or not. Just for a side-by-side -side comparison, this is a page from the comic about a psychopath using a magic item to mind control a group of unlucky people in a diner and forcing them to kill each other. And this is the same scene in the audiobook. Hour 16. Party games. Murder in the dark.
See what I mean? Not every chapter is like this. There's actually a huge range in tone, but the dark bits get really dark. Anyway, getting back to the audiobook as a whole, Gaiman narrates a lot of it himself, and I think he does a pretty good job considering he's not an actor by trade. James McAvoy provides the voice of Morpheus, Kat Denning plays his big sister Death, Taron Egerton appears as Constantine, and Michael Sheen joins Gaiman once again since Good Omens to voice Lucifer. B.B. Neweth, Andy Serkis, and Samantha Morton also make appearances as small players. I'm honestly a little surprised that David Tennant didn't make an appearance, but there's more characters in later volumes, so it's still possible. Ooh, maybe he could play Destiny, that would be cool. Death was the standout supporting character for me, and a quick look into the Sandman fandom showed me that I was far from being alone in this. I personally thought that all the performances in this just rocked. The casting was perfect across the board. The only thing that I think might have been slightly jarring for the comic fans is Dream himself, but in a way that couldn't possibly have been avoided. In the comic, Dream's speech bubbles are always in inverted colours, which gave me the impression that his voice is, like, super otherworldly in a inhuman and maybe even ineffable way, and while James McAvoy's performance is splendid, it's still only human. Like I said, there's no way they could have avoided this, it's just an adaptation-themed observation. That's, you know, kind of my thing. BTW, The Sandman was technically a reboot of a not particularly popular superhero comic from 19. 39, but has very little in common with the original concept. Despite this, Gaiman worked in several references to this more campy Sandman into the story. Because this is an adaptation of multiple issues of a long-running comic, each chapter holds two certain unifying themes and they often tie into each other, but this audiobook doesn't tell a single, continuous story. It's very episodic. Sometimes they're connected fairly heavily, like chapters 1 through 4, but others are complete bottle episodes. So, adaptation-wise, how does this score in accuracy? Well, as I mentioned, I'm not a huge comic guy, so I didn't know from the get-go, but I tracked down the relevant volumes, and, uh, yeah! It's really, really, really close to the original. Some flair's been added here and there to compensate for the lack of artwork, and descriptions are included when the dialogue can't speak for itself, but otherwise it's basically word for word, which is very impressive. However, there is an argument to be made that maybe it sticks a little too close and misses a chance to make up for the mistakes of the past. You see, the comic leans very heavily into the bury your gaze trope. I can't off the top of my head think of a single confirmed LGBTQ character, good or evil, who did didn't die horribly in the same chapter they were introduced. I believe that Neil Gaiman once said something to the effect of he wishes he'd done that particular aspect of the comic differently, but the audiobook sticks to it just as faithfully as everything else. From what I've heard, the upcoming Netflix adaptation is going to introduce a few changes, so hopefully that will be one of them. Also, by the way, there's going to be a Netflix adaptation. Hooray! If you don't think that the more extreme horror elements of this audio drama would bother you, then I cannot recommend it enough. It's currently available for download exclusively exclusively on Audible, and you could potentially listen to it for free. When you sign up for Audible's commitment-free 30-day trial, you get a credit that can be used to get any audiobook, including The Sandman. Then, every month from then on, you'll be given a new credit for another audiobook of your choice, regardless of cost. All you have to do is follow the link in the video description, or go to audible.com slash the DOM, or text the DOM to 500-500, and in addition to the free audiobook, you'll also get access to monthly Audible original content. At the end of the trial, if you decide the subscription isn't for you, you can cancel before you make any payments, and you still get to permanently keep all the audiobooks you've downloaded so far. While The Sandman is definitely my recommendation today, Audible has an unmatched library, so it's worth checking out even if horror isn't your thing. So again, that's audible.com slash the DOM, text the DOM to 500-500, or follow the link in the video description. Thank you for joining me, my beautiful watchers. I'm sorry that this video is significantly shorter than my usual runtime. I do find that I struggle to find enough things to say about stuff that I liked. Partly because ranting just involves more words, and partly because I do want to try to avoid spoilers. If you still enjoyed it, would you be so good as to do me a solid and help me out with all the little things that stop channels from being forsaken by the uncaring horror beast that is the YouTube algorithm, like commenting, hitting the like button, sharing on the social medias, and subscribing if you're new. Please take care of yourselves out there in these troubled times, and I will see you soon. An ocean, a cave, a dream that no one could save, a shelter, a whole act, a light that died with the night. You and I, we got our differences. Yeah. 
Much love and appreciation to my patrons of honor, Shelby Holtz, Sam Cucinotta, and Atel Spurdloff. Destiny, death, destruction, desire, despair, delirium, dream, and dull. Oh, smiling hurts my face, fucking hell. Oh. I, I don't know if this is an over 30 thing or a state of the world thing, but yeah, ow, what the fuck?